okay, here's a perspective of fostering and adoption. Yeah, for me, yeah. Fostering is almost the make money one, and adoption is the one where you're gonna end up being broke because they don't, they got no support. But is is that a myth? Yes. Okay, I would cool. say okay. You get, <laughs> we'll make you some do money get paid for, some fostering. Okay, let me let me get let me get down to me, <laughs> Sorry. So. <laughs> Affinity Extra, be extra. Hey guys, this is Roger Moore here on Affinity Extra. We're here to be fast and extra. This is Roger Moore on the Edge Show. I'm just banging out conversation after conversation. You know the conversations you have on the phone and you're not allowed to have it on a, you're only allowed to do it. I think it's um, probably on a Tuesday and a Thursday. You got to give the prayer meeting and church a day to fall off before you start talking it real yeah <laughs> i got my 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 esteemed guest um who um amazing guest uh, uh music uh, i gotta say music geek or aka um um sophie smith because um i think we're gonna be talking her work stuff today so is it music if it's selfie smith when it comes Eva to arriva. okay Eva cool, arriva, okay. music mind. geek man music geek i have to <laughs> first pay homage to music geek i i i don't know if you heard on my on my, on my pod oh, I'm, I'm a little shout out so i chat a lot anyway guys yeah but i have to salute because music geek sh show was my nan died a year ago like it's the first weekend of, of the station and i have to while she's you know she's here man she's she's in she's in the building so i have to just pay homage you know that show was like a blessing you know Know, just my nan died on a Sunday and, and I just come and sat down in my, in the studio, empty studio, chop put the radio on and what is it man? It's a pure retro vibe, the first shot of mu uh, of, of, of music geek did, uh, did which was Take Me Back show on Affinity Extra and it was help it helped me to you know when you think of the positivity of, of history and who you are and and who your people are and whatsoever, you know uh, 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 uh history man so it's always a blessing to to sneakily between two and three p.m. on a Sunday. Do join us there, and um, and I'll start working on my uh, my soprano and alto. You know, working out. You know, you know the good thing about choir music, guys. You, you can you can you can you can you know you know these fancy dancey clock sisters. You can't even try to work out harmonies in that. But at least with the choir stuff, you can at least try and attempt to get there. So um, let's put it out there. You know, I'm just trying to work on my voice but anyway but, um, but, but we aren't a different tip right here today guys but we're on a serious, very serious thing something i work with young people um, in the system and outside the system I, I work with damaged young people in their 30s and they're still damaged from their childhood um and they're still damaging the next generation as well <laughs> and um, i work with them through it sounds weird through well-being projects in the community um, um but one of the major um, things i have had a a real 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 issue with is our community approach towards adoption and fostering i think when i say our community our christian black community afro-caribbean community um i see the culture in the mindset of uh of my own family my own loved ones you know me now I want that picnic, me now it's not mine it's not mine you know what i'm saying oh they're gonna reject me so i don't want that rejection i'm thinking are you that insecure anyway so we're gonna we're gonna be bouncing all that and and and, and we're gonna because i do think it's a conversation which i remember growing up and seeing adoption agencies paying for advertising in church national um programs and stuff because they knew if i can get some good good church folk and there's bad folk in church don't get twisted we can get them you know we, we've got somewhere to help you know we've got some a space a healthy space for these children to grow up in and there's so many positive stories about young people who are lost out there i work in a care home you do not want children to get into the care home system you want them to be in a loving environment but the question is is the church pushing it is the church supporting it should the church support it should the church invest in it and how yeah these are the questions i'm going to ask and i'm going to be rude i'm going to be honest i'm going to be very very emotive about this um if you're going to say roger how many adop adopted and foster kids uh do you, ha do you have and I, I have none you know what i'm saying the environment around me is not conducive for that you know i don't have no support um the mindset you, you can't go in it when everybody doesn't in the whole family really supports it and i think sophie you're going to explain your side of things because I know you personally, you have a support framework in, within your family, um, not you know, which supports that environment. And I think we need to hear, see that case study and be blessed by it as well. So mm -hmm. let's get into it, guys. First and foremost, fostering adoption is how I see it. Yeah. 
but then Sophie says something like permutius or something like that. Still, yes, permanence. Permanence. That's it. That's it. Permanence. Mm -hmm. um, now, explain to us just a bit more. You know, the official details of of of, of fostering and adoption, the difference, and how does permanence come in as a as 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 a phrase, and what does it actually cover? Okay, so children who cannot be looked after by their birth families, and in this country we say in care or looked after children. Mm -hmm. So there's children that um, have some difficulties growing up in their birth families. Um, there may be historical issues with their parents that would stop their parents being able to look after them main. So in those cases, the local authority usually get involved. Um, to cut a long story short, the local authority would then for therefore be the main carer for these children or sometimes in some instances share the care with the birth families cool so there's a difference there's fostering and there's adoption um adoption is more of a permanent so that's where permanence comes in roger mm. um it's more of a permanent arrangement um with the child and um, the adopters so you bec that becomes your child so that's an agreement with the courts that that child becomes your child. Fostering is you're helping to care for that child. So it's not a permanent arrangement or it's not a arrangement where you take the place of that child's birth family. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's, that's, that's cool. Now, the, 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 hopefully guys you get all that because um, that's all that you, it, I think that sometimes we hear certain words it kind of throws us off because sometimes we just know fostering and adoption you know what I mean quite simple so it's, it's good to hear to understand that um, that new, the new the new word now um, as a person of colour um, as as the official word is um, I'd say black person yeah but um, as a person of colour in the when I say in the system in the Care, when I say guys, you have to realize this care system is very, very deep. You know, I mean, it's got professionals in every sink, you know, every element of the child, not only in care homes, but also in, in, in um, different areas. Now, yourself and your experiences in there. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm from the outside looking in. I do do a bit of care, care work, but not to the level that you have in terms of management and different levels. Are you happy with the input of Christian people with knowing and seeing? young black children in care of are, are we stepping are we doing what we need to be doing let's go straight to the point no i'm going to say no i think yeah i'm good I'm, I'm we're on the edge today roger we're on the edge you said you um, said, no, you oh, said it within three seconds no ago. No, no, no 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 <laughs> yeah cool let's enough. keep real not good enough cool but I, I do think that there's there's different reasons for that mm. i think um there's not enough information out there and there's lots of myths mm. as well that, you know, our community, I say our community, the black led yeah. community, um, have have a lot of myths around foster and adoption. And obviously we can't kind of take away um, racism and the things that we have, as black people have, have endured in this country as mm. well, that the official kind of assessments and mm. things like that may be off putting for people Mm -hmm. as as one of the reasons why people don't get involved we know that i know from the caribbean culture i can only speak for my culture um that authority and um people in your business for instance is is a big thing within our community mm -hmm. and within the assessment Inside. period and the assessments that happened with mm -hmm. fostering mm -hmm. you have to be very vulnerable you have to you know people have to know what's going on with you and mm. you know we've been trained almost born to keep keep ourselves to ourselves mm. stay within our community mm. but this is outside people um cool. knowing everything about you mm. the reasons that they have to know everything everything about you is that these children are coming from vulnerable homes they've lost um their permanent or their their primary caregiver for for lots of different reasons and um they have to be stable so we, we have to do a lot of checks and a lot of um, assessments around who you are so mm. we've got to know everything about you because we're not what we're not going to do is place this child who's coming from a difficult background into another difficult 
back, um, you know, going forward yeah, in, a, in another difficult family. So we have to know everything that's going on. And a lot of people are scared to share that information, which is fair enough. So no, we're not doing enough because I don't hear enough about it yeah. within the black led church i can only speak about the black led churches because that's what i'm used to mm. but we don't hear enough about it and i see this as a social justice issue so yeah. when we're talking about children that we're giving back to and we are collecting money for charities and different things that we do as as christians and within mm. the church mm. setting mm. this does not seem to be a priority within the church i don't hear many people um pushing it or talking about it in the, within the church so no we're not doing enough wow i i i uh um yeah um do you <laughs> guys this is not this is not Mic drop. Mic yeah, drop. yeah it's one of the ones where i'm thinking <laughs> i'm meant to drop them lines not not on self i'm meant to be like no we're, 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 but no no it's it, it, you know me yeah yeah you know so, me. so so you we, know we, 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 we be flatlining right here but um <laughs> But I do, okay, so do you, okay, some, okay, let's go into the myths, yeah? Because I, cause I mentioned some of the ones where, you know, um, this is if this really, let me give you insight in one, yeah? And it's um, and bounce off from yourself. Because of the rejection that we have, the rejection of the wind wash, yeah? Mm-hmm. And we haven't, and when we say rejection, the children being left in the West Indies and the children over here, are we suffering over overspill of not dealing with the rejection, the hurt of that, and ultimately they don't want to receive this uh, in a different way. They don't want to be rejected, so they don't want to put themselves in a vulnerable position. Is that a? Is that a? I would re- say that's, that is God. that's that's probably I'm, I'm one trying, of the I'm reasons. Not trying yeah, to make yeah, no excuses, no. but I'm, I'm trying to expose things that we need to maybe instead of looking at this and maybe dig back a bit 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 and thinking why are we so well we don't talk roger oh yeah this is part of the reason Mm. i'm saying that even myself when you know when looking at this whole topic that came to me quite late and i thought to myself actually you know there's a there's a big um percentage of people older people now that you know like you said in the windrush had left their children in mm. another country to be mm. raised by somebody else mm. um and there's there's lots of guilt around that there's lots of um adults now walking around that probably haven't dealt with being left um there's there's lots of layers to this and i do think as a community we we don't actually discuss these issues mm. um everybody in their family's got some something going on with with the separation and attachments that mm of that time and you know it makes us who we are today but there's lots of um lots of things that we have not dealt with as you know we have ongoing trauma in in our community 100%. um and you know some of some of that may have catal- may have been the catalyst why some children are in care for instance um we we do have a large proportion of black children um in the care system is it is it hype is it a hype because obviously uh, you know i do see a lot, lot of black children in, in where i work but um obviously you will see the more overall thing because obviously you're you're coming from more of a social work i've seen a list of uh, 100 children underneath your caseload and getting stressed out about that and all the business is it really that high is it like looking at the prison services where we have 40 percent in prisons is it, is it is it as bad as that or it is i think oh, wow. there's but it's going back to trauma. Yeah. It's going back yeah. to why mm. are these children in care in the first place? Yeah. Um, some of the reasons I would say is parenting and mirrored parenting or lack of parenting. Mm. And why is that? You you have to keep going back. Why is that? Why is that? And why is that? Mm. Do you understand? So mm. my thing is about security, stable, being stable. Mm. And a lot of people that have struggled in um you know years gone by not being it being stable and had Mm. children Mm. in those periods have Mm. not been able to keep their children or they've not had the support um to parent their children Mm. and it's it's spiraled out of control there could be drug and alcohol issues there could be mental health issues there's there's so many different reasons why children come into care but there is a high proportion of um, black children that do come into care and the issue is that we don't have 
the same level of black carers out there to care for these children. And that's not to say also um, that it is only black black carers that care for black children, because that is um, not always the case. And, and we're not saying that it's only black carers that can care for black children. But um, I do believe that um, um, identity is a big thing within mm. the community mm, as well mm. and representation mm. as well and stability and um, consistency um, representation that that helps with bringing up a child and bringing up a family and you know from what you see that the um, impact of people being stable in your life that's made you be the person you are today if you had people coming in and out um, you're going through different types of homes, um, you know, more than one, living in more than one type of home throughout your life. You know that, you, you know, the Mix stability up. could throw yeah. you off. And I'm working currently, I work with um, mm -hmm. young people from 16 to 25 mm -hmm. that are coming out of the care system. So I see on that side as well, yes, of yeah. Yeah. lack of stability that sometimes they can go down, down downwards um, spiral and then start having their own children. Yeah. And then we're back to square one. Yeah, we you know, no. <sighs> okay, right. So guys, this, 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 this is, you know, you know why this is, this is gonna be a tough one for me people, because I actually, um, I, I, I struggle, I struggled with, 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 with uh, uh, cultural lackness because of my eyes. Um, I know that people feel very, very uncomfortable about the word wokeness, um, but I think the woke is a, is a is a correct is a correct almost analogy of a lot of um, my generation of people over the past five years when it comes to Christianity and culture, and it hurts me that we don't recognise some of the the black the, the Africanness and the, uh, the lack of Africanness in us and the lack of desire because we're Christians we don't need to touch that. It hurts that you know you want to take away but it also hurts even more but like jesus said you know we we go to christians sophie you know and you hear the scripture suffer the little children to come yeah we we say so we sing it well. we sing suffer the little children is that how you do it in your mm -hmm. church you probably do faster yeah. you know so do you need you need to not saying oh, <laughs> but we we sing that song guys you know and we raw lip service it is absolute lip service it's not good enough because we sing these songs and we don't see right underneath our noses you know and you know what's scary i'm hearing now people in children in care that have grandparents in a church leading song service that is happening right now uncles and aunties preaching grace preaching um sovereignty in christ preaching yeah man we're all gonna get to heaven while their own nieces great nieces cousins and stuff are in care I understand sometimes it's a hard situation you can't get involved I understand I respect that but there are some scenarios where you go hold on a second I come into the care system, work system thinking that our people are like nah 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 we're gonna take care of my grandchild you know what I mean you got that kind of pride saying you know what we're gonna take care of our don't worry we got this you know just back us up we got this but I don't see it absolutely don't see it and I expect to see it even more from Christians but that's just me you know um what has you know what has been a kickback for yourself um, when it comes to church organisations? Is there a... Has organisations tried to reach out to yourself and say, oh, there's a, there's a young black lady here, let's talk to her. How can we... Has anybody reached out to you? Not, I mean... Or to I've people, you know? In, not really. I mean, I've worked in fostering and I've worked in adoption mm. previously, prior to this job. Um, and when I've I've kind of reached, I, I mean, I was a part of a um, I'll, I'll mention it Kingdom Worship Movement with Noel Robinson. Um, mm -hmm. I approached them and we did yeah. a little bit of a um, promotion there. And we got quite a lot of people 
um, interested in. Cool. This was good few years ago. Um, but well, that which was one when was I was that working one? in adoption. Was that anyone in Birmingham? Is that his event that he does? That was no. It's an event that is a yearly event. Um, KWM. Yeah. That happens. Mm. Um, I don't know if it's still happening. It's been happening for over ten years. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. In London. Mm i am at different churches but um it's a worship event okay and um i approached noel at the mm. time because i know that noel was heavily connected to compassion which is another oh, um, okay yes 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 yeah so with me sort of going through the adoption um we had the conversation and then i was able to kind of share and mm. and um mm. a lot of people came and but surprisingly a lot of people didn't know that they were eligible to adopt or to foster so I was quite blown away with where's this information and why doesn't anybody know about it? And there was genuine people that were interested in going through that road. So some of that is also the local authorities and people putting money into promoting this in the community as well. Mm. So I wouldn't say it was all the the church and and the black community. Sometimes when I've spoke to people, they said I never knew that I never was knew, to yeah. do this and you know I, I had no clue you know because sometimes people assume as well that with both us in adoption you have to be in like a um a, a already an established family um that you need to be married you know in a two two parent kind of setup mm -hmm. um there's a lot of people that do it singly mm -hmm. um as well that didn't know that they were able to people that don't own their own houses for instance you, you could be renting it doesn't necessarily mean you need to be have everything all together to just as a parent would you you know you you could have a child and not have your you know own your own house and whatnot but people have assumed that they were not qualified to even put themselves forward to to be a um, carer um so there's yeah. lots of myths around that <sighs> yeah yeah yes I, I, i'm guys I'm, I'm just my head's just running around here you know just thinking about okay i'm just looking at what holds back uh myself or people around me what's holding back and i find that um a lot of times you have one partner is going yeah 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 i want to adopt yeah and the other partner is like nah nah not me not me not me not me not me i i do feel that there's a lot of again um um fear yeah 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 fear 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 i think of, of, uh, there's a lot of, are we dealing with stuff in church really from people's childhood because really we got childhood issues as well you know what i mean that i think people don't want to inflict on people their childhood they're okay to do to their own skin or their own blood or whatever that's, but the but said okay child outside uh, you know i will have to might have to face some demons you know what i'm saying even if the person um and you will you okay. will and, okay and this is as part of the assessment process you will face some demons because obviously they're going to be talking to you about different elements of you different elements of your life your family life and whatnot and there may be things that you may be burying that you know it might be challenged and that might be a fear like you said fear of rejection as well particularly with adoption um people have this this idea that you know, when a child grows up, they're going to go back and find their um, their family and reject them. I think that's all a bit Hollywood, if, if you ask me now. If, um, we see a lot on TV and we've seen a lot on TV um, growing up about, you know, people running back and finding. But the culture is a lot different now. Um, and we embrace, you're embracing with the child their own identity. So the child would ultimately know um, who they are and, and that might mean you know information about their birth family as well so it shouldn't get to that stage where they're 16 or whatever and they think oh my gosh who am i because throughout we do something that's called life story work um and that is promoted within mm. um fostering and adoption okay to to the foster carers and adopters mm. Mm -hmm. to to make sure that the child understands their identity mm. where they've come from mm. why you're involved what mm. you bring to them mm -hmm. so it's it's a healthy relationship it's mm. not a secret mm. so there's ways around that and i find that that's more successful matches and more successful outcomes for the family if you're open and honest mm. and you get supported as mm. well so yeah, you will yeah. still get 
supported by social services or um, private um, arrangement, private um, agencies, if you've gone through that, that end, um, that will support you and train you to become a foster carer and train you to be an adopter. Mm -hmm. So you're not kind of sign up to something and then you're, you're left, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. all your little niggles that you might have whilst doing either fostering or adoption, there's somebody there that you can um, have that support from. Support. And yeah, yeah. yeah, so you're not left. Left so to I think it. People, yeah, 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 yeah. people don't understand that, I think, as well. So yeah yeah no 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 that's a hundred percent good point you know because everyone thinks oh my gosh if it goes wrong in the first week the child shouts at me they run off and they don't come back and this and that and you know they find it quite tough and uh, um it's that fear of of of, of it as well that, that's a valid point but are there christian agencies because I'm, I'm just coming from my little lived knowledge of it there is there many christian agencies out there that actually facilitate trying to get parents adopted you know adoption you know what i mean is there there is um there's one that i know called homes for good okay um home for good sorry um mm. which is a, a christian charity that's nice. that do support adoption and fostering um there's there's quite a lot out there there's okay, there's cool. There's agencies and there's also within the local authority, there's a lot of support groups mm. as well that, oh. that facilitate support um, of everybody from, from all types of backgrounds. So within the, the, we're talking about the black community here, there is quite a lot of um, black led um, fostering and adoption agencies that you can key into um, that have a lot of information as mm. well. It's, it's, it's a matter of Google sometimes, yeah, but yeah. there are very mm. reputable ones okay um but yeah that there, there are there's that support there and i would on, i want to say uh to be honest anyone who's listening into this conversation or will hear it in the future i think that's something that i'll have to speak to the team as we develop things like affinity extra we need we want to be supporting um any christian black agencies out there that needs the promotion that needs the support and need to put out there within our community but they're here to support them and they're here to connect them with children um um, in in the system, you know, um, I, I think that um, okay. Here's a perspective of fostering and adoption. Yeah, for me, yeah, fostering is almost the make money one, and adoption is the one where you're gonna end up being broke because they don't, they got no support. But is is that a myth? Yes. Okay, I would cool. say okay. You get <laughs> you make do some money get paid for, some fostering. Okay, let me let me get let me get down to meet you. <laughs> Sorry. So, fostering <laughs> is yeah. You do get paid to be a foster carer. Um okay <laughs> I'm fine you do get paid Ten to be children. a foster carer um because obviously it's not it's not your physical child yeah, yeah um you are sharing that responsibility the local authority who where the child's living or there's a there's there might be what's called a care order in place or there's an arrangement in place they're the responsible person for that young person for that child and they pay you to raise or you know collectively support that young child in that home so mm. it, you do get paid for fostering adoption um it's more about support packages for adoption so depending on the needs of that child um that there are some financial support for that they okay. can be i'm not saying with every child mm -hmm. but for instance if this child has very high needs mm. um they will look at a support package that will be able to maintain that that child with you okay if they they for instance if they've got health needs or they've mm. got a um, learning disability or mm. um if there's this you know other stuff that might come about when the child gets older they might need therapy they might need mm. some other stuff they look into that whilst they're assessing um and matching that child with you right. to see right. whether or not you you may need some financial help it's not always the case but mm. it is led by the child's needs Okay, so cool. if the child's needs are great and it's going to, for instance, you're going to have to be running up and down for this child and taking them to different types of um, therapies and things like that. They they bear all of that in mind, but it's not a payment, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not a job, as yeah, it were. Yeah, it's yeah. just facilitating support for that child. So, yeah, mm. that's... Yeah, yeah. yeah so, okay, that's cool. But no, no, that, That's definitely cool. Now... Um, We've okay, guys. I'm just gonna flat, flat flash it, uh, flash it somewhere. Um, so you know when um, d let's go back to rejection. I think rejection is 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 the one of the biggest things why people don't want to take on somebody else's child. It's not my blood. 
and it come a time that they want to want to go and see their own parents and go and find and seek their own children uh, parents now mm-hmm. um what do you say to that you know how do you come in because people just do they, they say, i'm not going to put all the energy into this child for that child to turn around and say oh do i i want to go and find my real mom but i don't want to go well, through that process i don't want to they don't want to get there it's i think sometimes it's what if that if that was to happen what is what is it that you think is going to happen to you, to your relationship with that child? Mm-hmm. Because a lot of the, like I said before, um, the, that whole relationship and it's not a myth, I would say, but we've kind of moved from, we've, we've moved years from having that kind of mindset or I would say um, professionally we've moved from okay. that. Mm-hmm. Um and I don't think I think a lot of the time, like I said, the the young person or the child mm-hmm. is there's there's a lot of work done with that child throughout their life anyway mm. to understand why they are with you in the first place. Okay. Um and, and it's a child's prerogative if they want to explore that because it's their identity, but that it's very minimal that you'll be rejected because that's the child will see you as their parent yeah 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 yeah, so it's it's a lot of all of these things get ironed out in in the initial period of um you know getting that information about fostering adoption anyway there's lots of before you would even sign up to be a foster carer or an adopter there's lots of questions and answers before you kind of sign on the dotted line as it were um to iron out and support these kind of issues that you might face and you do have support groups as well within other foster you know whilst you're doing your assessment Mm -hmm. there's other foster carers that are going through the same thing that you're going through Mm -hmm. so they have training and support groups that support that on these questions often do come up cool now that's that's cool because i think maybe it's a case of for me um um not even maybe i hear what you're saying i think that you know um we need to get this get over ourselves a little bit and realize that when you're working with young people they're going to be open and i and i think that people forget that we a teenager years especially the teenager years there's so much questions they're rude the this the that not all the children are rude but they have their time they have the moments whether they're your children or not your children and i think that but one thing i do know if you input good into young people they know what they know who to trust you know what i mean whenever they can kick off all the ones but then, uh, as they know, Dopey know who's frightened. But you know, they know, um, they know who, who who's good for them. And it may take them a year or two, three, four years to see truth. But if we have to, but some, maybe something that we don't, because we don't practice it ourselves in terms of identity, um, we don't see it important. We just say, see today or move forward. You know what I mean? But the thing we have to show is knowing their identities is still crucial. Knowing their makeup, knowing who they are, you know, mm-hmm. knowing you know, knowing where they come from, you know, what I'm saying actually, you know, they appreciate the carer, but you know, knowing that um, is something. And, and sometimes we 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 don't. Is it a mindset in ourselves that we have to reap what we sow um, directly? How we want it, we want we want to reap how we want to reap it. They don't realize we gotta sow into someone's life because that life. As much as it might not come back to me straight away, that life is definitely going to be different to them being in, the care, in, in care homes. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? People just need to be in care homes and see. Care homes, are, listen, I work in them and you know what I mean? It's not the, they're not all bad places, but it's not the place to grow up in. You know what I mean? Changing care homes two, three, four, five times, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've seen children kept changing 10 care homes. I don't know if you've seen that situation a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not a great scenario, so we need um, that stability. Now, I'm a pastor in the church, sis. How can leadership really support what you're, what, because I know you've got, you can you kind of really expand on what you're trying to set up a, a kind of, or being um, part of a kind of setup to, um, to, to really push this agenda. Yeah. How can leadership now, you know, who are listening in, people in churches want to point their pastor to somebody who, who did they pointing to because nobody's going to, to uh, uh, Leighton Stowe's council and going, I want to, oh, oh, my church isn't here to, to send the kids to me and I'll get, I'll, I've got five bridges in my church. How does it all work and how can we get leadership really plugging into this from a church perspective? From you know. a church, I mean, there's lots of things going on behind the scenes. Um, obviously, I've not got all the information to yeah. share today, but um, there's a need. I mean, there's there's a lot of like-minded people like myself um, that are very passionate about this. And hopefully um, once things are established, we can then start 
you, you know, not I'm not saying it's solely us, for instance, yeah, 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 yeah. so the people that might be doing it, yeah. but then start trying to look at um, different different ways, like you said, to to capture the minds of the churches um, for them to be to have someone to go to. At the moment, I don't see, I know we have adoption week in November. We have a few things dotted around, you know, adoption awareness week and whatnot. Um, I don't see things happening throughout the year, um, you know, in my face. Although I obviously I work for local authority and I see it within my workplace, but you know, in terms of campaigns and stuff, I don't yeah, see easy. a lot When going is adoption on. week? It's November sometime. Oh, I'm not sure the yeah. week this year, but I'll, I will. You, know, you make I'll, sure. I'll I, I, we'll I, make I, sure I, that we. Yeah, we, it we this definitely. Year. Yeah, hundred percent plug it. We will. We, we, we'll, you know, get the pieces together and we'll share it in our network. Because I think that that's yeah. important to prompt people into it. Um, and then adoption, not fashion, but adoption week. Um, I think. It, I think. Um, uh, I think that would be great to kind of push us here. Um, mm -hmm. So we, with leadership now, sis. You know. Um, so ultimately, you, you'll be. You'll hopefully going to be something going to be coming out of the woodwork that you'll be part of. Um, yeah we you know it's just about the strategy to do that yeah, yeah, at the yeah, moment yeah. in you know, consultation about, stage yeah at the moment yeah yeah in cool. yeah but but we see there's a need and that's the mm. main thing we see there's a need um we take in also you know what people like yourself think about adoption and fostering or what you don't know because you know i'm not going to pretend that you know i've been a social worker for nearly 18 years so this is my bread and butter mm. but for other people that might not be um of faith to to what we do it, it's it's all new to them um so it's about speaking that language and making sure that the people that need to know know in in the way that is helpful to us That's and nice. to them yeah um but it's we're a long way we're, we're a long way we just need to kind of set the set the mode to start dropping information and um having a goal like you say having a go-to place for people to come if they want to be assessed um or if they just want to know a little bit more about it and how they can help how or how they can further the information even yeah man. um and have that as part of their makeup at church or mm -hmm. i say church but you know i'm not saying church the building yeah but it, but it's almost a community but, church yeah the, 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 the community. community yeah the community because and, and, yeah and like you said it's giving back it's 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 much more than you know a week it's sewing like you said it's sewing in somebody's in life. life i mean yeah. i have first-hand experience of that you know my family is very okay to fostering you know mm. i've got family members that are foster carers Brilliant. and those children are very much our family mm. so it's not the foster children it's not it's our family and and our community recognize them as part of our family and having that they will then prosper and feel secure enough mm. to have a positive outcome in their life um i think when you feel a little bit different it's you know it's them and us that's not how that's not the way that we want this to work out nah, for nah. the children no 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 100 percent. you know um uh <laughs> that that's 100 percent. I'm, I'm thinking in my head you know this is where we need to i know we look we could look at our infrastructures and um in churches and it really we just really have it evolved from the 70s and the 50s 60s um mm -hmm. to to a modern environment of taking care of children as well we thought we were so uh, advanced with sunday school you know what i mean we used to go in the vans you know what i mean pick up the children um um and so, sorry i might open up a can of worms with that but anyway but um uh the uh pick up children the parents used to love sending children to church because they would have three four hours to set to themselves um so they yeah i mean we'll we'll we'll, we'll input into the children morality and when the children will go back and the other child will stay around hang around maybe give be part of the church maybe become a singer learn instrumentation and and and, and the rest is history um and, and a lot of them leave at the age of 13 but um, um but <laughs> uh, but at least to have that that, that positive input i don't mm -hmm. see no church vans really go around the place as they used to and it's like we haven't said to ourselves okay right this model's not working now 
Right, so what's the new model? The new model is how do we plug into the care system where our children are at? Um, because we were we were reaching out to children and just looking at models and looking at how we re-engage in them. Um, having youth clubs on the Fridays don't really work as, as effective as they used to. How do we do this? Okay, we have a football club. Oh, we do this, we do that. And this is how we engage in the community. We invest into people who are doing it, not just mm -hmm. have to do it in our four walls. It's, 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 it's really evolving the, uh, the mindset, you know, um, maybe having officers in church uh, and looking at, um, I don't know, if, what's, the right, what's the right word? Um, is it, oh, I don't want to use flag burial. Um, you know, somebody who used to do fostering, maybe getting them to do talks mm -hmm. about their experiences and pushing yeah. them up instead of saying, oh, they're free to take care of children now. We can put them aside. But it's really getting them to talk their stories and support the young, younger families doing it. I just don't see that happening. Yeah. No, I take I take that because you, you learn by example, don't you? And a lot of the time, if, if you've got somebody in your community that's been through something, you're more likely to listen to them. Yeah. That you tr somebody that you trust rather mm -hmm. than an official person to say come and do this la 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 mm -hmm. if you know joe blogs in your church you know i've done it you know and these are my issues that i've had and this is how i um you know got through it it's it's more um helpful to the cause i do believe that and that is embedded also within um the, some of the trainings that happen there's there's different people that come and talk um from the different communities and and it's open and honest as well because i'm not saying it's all perfect and it's all yeah, from singing and dancing and all the rest of it because these children are coming from difficult backgrounds mm. and it's going to take consistency to iron that out and Correct. you know a lot of the time at the first hurdle you might think oh they don't you know they're not responding to me if you look at their history and the child's history and where they're coming from that they're probably working you out to think are you gonna actually stay Be, yeah, stay yeah. are you gonna be consistent Come on. am i gonna invest my mm. time with you why am i gonna invest my time with you if you're gonna Is leave me or true? um so it's that whole boundaries and and you know making positive boundaries between both foster carer and child you know there's lots of it's new it's a is that gelling together it's gonna it's like having a new baby Mm. and you, you're a new parent and you're kind of working out oh, am i good enough to be a parent and um, this is the first time they're crying why are they crying all night and you know the child has to get used to the parent the parent get used to being a parent and mm. and grow together so it's it's not going to be you know i'm not going to be pretending that everything's you know hunky dory and mm. everything's going to be smiling all the time but there are support support there for for those moments and you know groups and things like that that you can have frank conversations with mm. that would be able to try and iron out those and as i said social worker you would you would have a social worker as well if you're if you've got a foster care if you're a foster carer yeah that yeah, you yeah. can lean, lean on, on for yeah. support now I, I, and like i said guys we're not saying this is a, a uh, this is like watching um you know when you watch the movies on um on, on, on the christian network and it's just this perfect you know adoption um lifestyle we're not talking this is not it's not going to be easy you know if you if you go this route and we are not coming on here and saying that guys you take this up god's got you it's gonna be a piece of cake or whatever but whatever we do in life isn't a piece of cake anyway so for me you know when we sow into people it's just like I, I i would love to see the support within church naturally for people who do this but as 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 sophie's mentioning about this the support groups and maybe it's a case of look, uh, being in consultation continually evolving how we develop this over the future but i do feel that this covid season Season has allowed us to to press pause relook how we engage within our community um and and move forward you know what i'm saying because we need to move forward together and not be this whole enclosed environment we don't talk to nobody but to be open honest and move forward, forward properly and we need to deal with our internal demons i really do there's a lot of internal demons um in terms of the way we bring up ch children the way we're taking care of children, the way that abuse has been hidden in church, the way that a lot of things that have been hidden in church, we need to, and that's why church doesn't want to embrace these things. Because so maybe when you press that button, you know what I'm saying, some of the safeguarding issues may come up with you, some of the people in the church. If you press CRB too often, um, you get B, 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 or DBS, sorry. Um, if you press DBS, that button too yeah. often, you know, um, mm -hmm. you have to be careful. So again, you know, 
if you're saying, oh, I don't want to get people into put your attitude, there's your children in there or your nieces and nephews in the church. So if there's people failing the system who shouldn't be around ch children as an individual, you need we people need to know you know what i mean just for safeguarding purposes but you know that that's a whole a lot lot of uh, a whole nother yeah, topic yeah, that's, that's a whole flag whole there. Topic. That's, uh, it's a, there's some snow anyway there's, there's, there's a snow <laughs> out there I'll i think we've it. been there before roger because oh. i think um mm. and also i think it's important therapy is very important as well if, if you have those issues i know mm. i remember your guest anu that came on yeah yes with last year yeah yeah and we were talking about therapy and and mm. whatnot and you know if there are stuff that you might be worried about before you start this journey of fostering adoption get that the support and, and and try and deal with it before um you start the process you know in terms of your own life i, I am quite flagging the flag for therapy as well as you know roger i just think yeah it's, it's very very important and i think as a community there's there's always been a negative connotation and rightly so as well because I, I don't want to kind of sound like we're all brand new about some of the issues that we've had as a community particularly with the authorities and, and police and all kind of stuff and and even mental health and all the rest of it we're not going to go into that today but I do believe that it is important that we talk about um, professionally we talk about our demons you know pray about it but also you know seek the help that we do need to be able to iron out these issues so that it doesn't become an issue and disruption for if you're going down this journey 100%. Um, and you can support this the child or, or the children that yeah. you want to help no fair, fair therapy I, I see i see as a hundred percent thing but it's again it's like i said you know we don't want to deep dive in things but we'll get there anyway so because we've got angela she's been working hard and she's going to be now i'm settled in my new space as you can see there's a mm -hmm. bit of different background very was, posh roger very oh very yeah posh. i feel like a proper youtuber now <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I got, my, I got all the greeny lights in the background. I'm going, oh, yeah. yes, I got it. I got things nice. And, and, and probably gets, no, it's really cool. And uh, give God the glory because it's come from <laughs> a year of craziness. I did, I did a little talk about it. But uh, but no, 100% we're going to try and get people in, guests in, and we're going to talk it talk it through and whatsoever. Um, and, and I think it's really important for us to open up the subject. Now, we're going to be keeping our eyes open, people over the next couple months but i reckon by the early part of next year god sparing life and god now come and gone and second coming come and we need to millennium rain whatever is going ahead of us yeah but by i believe that um sophie will have some um, um framework or of organization framework to plug into um it, is that okay to say that sis yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but hopefully by the uh, early part of next year we'll have some to plug into if you are an organization that's thinking right you remember us feel no way message mm -hmm. us because it's not about just uh we need to network up we're not here to go oh this is my baby i've got five children and he said we need to move from that and realize that we've got all 100 babies ourselves let's mm -hmm. come together and get to a thousand quicker because we can come together and get further you know not about absorbing each other and whatsoever so um definitely is there any last things you would say any any last they can get at me as well personally if they want yes, to yes. as well at music geek so so that's music geek s-o-p-h um on instagram mm -hmm. just send me a message if if this has triggered anything for you mm. and you probably and I, and it's it doesn't matter where you are in in the uk or wherever um, I can try and signpost you to somebody Good. to speak to wherever you live that may be able to support you. Um, yeah, that's that's it really. And yeah, that's me. That's cool. That's cool. Listen, guys, you know, you heard it first from the music geek herself, uh, a.k.a. Sophie Smith. And uh, uh, we appreciate your time today, sis, with us today. Um, and people do sign up do do keep an eye on things do at her directly any personal questions don't you don't have to go via me like you said go into instagram you know do hit us up at affinity extra we will be pushing out adoption week um that's on even if we don't blame music geek yeah <laughs> you know what I'm saying? so we'll, we'll definitely be pushing out some stuff there and guys when you next year we'll be we want to be over this next year pushing people to practical real organizations from your physical health to your mental health to our community health and we mm -hmm. want to be championing organizations 
not just giving them five pound fifty after a uh, charity week we want to be really championing these things so thanks again yo guys you're on edge show uh here and youtube and you do just like you subscribe you think that people meant to do at the end anyway so yeah but this is roger here alongside the music geek god bless you over bless. and out bye visit us for updates and shows at affinityextra.co.uk